moving to Santa Monica, I've always had access to fresh fruits and vegetables. It took me five minutes to get to this farmer's market today. Everybody deserves, you know, good organic food. You shouldn't have to travel across half the world to, you know, get it. I've always had access to healthy foods and vegetables. I'm very lucky. You can't get nutritious organic food in the neighborhood, but you can get alcohol. You can get fast food 24 hours a day. Most people don't realize the change that comes from planting a garden. And it represents an opportunity to design the life that you want to live and not the one that was designed for you. What I did, I saw this and this, and I turned it into that. That's what a garden represents to me, freedom. I'm Ron Finley. I'm the Gangster Gardener. Basically what we do is we grow people and we change culture. But don't tell anybody that because everybody thinks it's about food. It's not. I've lived in South Central most of my life. The neighborhood was predominantly black. It was a vibrant neighborhood when I grew up. It was still poor, but you kind of didn't realize you were poor because everybody around you was the same. I guess I realized the inequality early on as a child because I got off the bus at the wrong stop. I got off the Rodale Drive and I, it was like I was at Disneyland or Oz or somewhere because it was, it was just beautiful and the people were in all these fancy cars. So that's how I discovered that things were different. Things in your neighborhood wasn't the same as things in other neighborhoods. I developed a reverence for the soil, I guess, early on in my childhood because we always had plants growing in the house or outside, but we didn't have the land to, to really grow. So when I did have it, I realized I can feed myself with this soil. I wanted to experience beauty. I wanted to walk outside and I want hummingbirds, you know, landing on my shoulder and butterflies kissing me in the ears and bumblebees. So. I decided to put a garden up in front of my house. And um, I got a rest warrant. <laughs> I didn't know that there was an ordinance that you couldn't grow whatever the hell you wanted to grow in front of your house. It's funny because nobody complained when there was trash. Nobody complained when the lawn wasn't cut. I didn't get a citation. But as soon as I beautify it, I get a citation. Why is this? This is about people having the capacity to design a life that they choose instead of having somebody else choose how you're going to live and how you're going to wind up. I didn't realize that I, I was in a, what they call a food desert, which I call a food prison. You just stop and you realize and you look around and you're like, wow, this whole environment has been designed for my demise. It's hard as hell to get anything healthy. You have bad food, liquor stores, DaVita Dialysis Center, and there's the drugstores 24 hours a day. Why? These African-American communities, we're only 13.2, 13.5% of the population. Why are our mortality rates higher than everybody else? Why are our, our chronic diseases higher than everybody else? A lot of these diseases are caused by food. Your food should not kill you, it should heal you. The ability to grow your own fruits and vegetables, that is free. You see this little worm right here? This is not your friend. I know he looks cute and nice. He's not, he's not your friend. See the damage this little one thing can do? So imagine if it was thousands of those. And I said, I gotta fight this. I'm not taking this guard now. You know, do what you have to do. I found out about Ron from reading an article in the newspaper. The guy pulls into my office. He's got a very strong personality. And I just liked him. He and I began to talk about what he was doing. Ron Finley's project confronts 
the overall problem that we have. They're not an equal amount of locations in economically challenged areas where you can just walk into the market and find a wide variety of fresh vegetables and things of that nature. We like healthy stuff, just like everybody else. When you have one group that has all of the opportunities and another group that you have to fight to ensure that they have opportunities. That's inequality, and that's what we try to balance out here. So we decided that we try to legally put together an ability to grow vegetables on city parkways. The vote was unanimous, which was 15 to zero. We got the ordinance changed. You can now grow food on the street. It ain't about food. This is about people. You have a child that takes this little teeny seed that you can barely see, and they put it in the ground. And days later, it sprouts. What happens is magic. See, that carrot is not just a carrot. That carrot represents inspiration. That carrot represents pride. That carrot represents freedom. This is about waking people up, and that's what makes this dangerous. <laughs> I am an activist. You know, for real, for real. I'm trying to change all of this. I'm trying to bring it to light so these kids can have a chance. It's about re-engineering this system. A lot of people figure that the system is the way it is and you can't do anything about it. But you have what's in you to change your environment. This is spread around the world. Like an 11 and a 12 year old sister and brother in India sending me pictures of them propagating them plants in India and calling themselves gangster gardens. We have to be self-sustaining. No one's coming to save your ass. You're the guy on the white horse to coming to save your own ass. That's gangster to me.